the story of the four friends who brought their friend uh, to Jesus. Uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, breakthrough faith um, over uh, the past, I think nearly five weeks, uh, five or six weeks, uh, living our lives, believing that things are possible uh, with Jesus. Uh, living our lives, believing that breakthrough can happen. The, the, the truth is, uh, for many of us, we have faced some difficult circumstances and it's been a long time. Um, some, yeah, a short time, some a long time. Um, and, you know, we, we begin to wane a bit, don't we? And wondering, are we going to see the breakthrough that we are longing for? Uh, I believe that the heart of Jesus is for us to see breakthrough come. Uh, whatever that is for our lives. God wants us to believe. The whole gospel of John um, is about believing in Jesus. Um, will you believe? Do you believe this? Is some of the, the phrases that you will see in the gospel of John. Do you believe this? That we, yes, we believe in Jesus. Do you know, sometimes when we just, it's our testimony, well, I believed in Jesus, um, and then that's it. But God wants us to live our lives believing that all things are possible in him. When we need peace, that he would give us peace. When we need comfort, that he will provide comfort for us. He's given us the Holy Spirit. Uh, and for many of us, uh, many of our lives, we live with that invisible ceiling over our lives. Um, not seeming to break through uh, just the, the, the fears in our life, um, you know, the things that God calls us to do, um, whether, whatever it is, you know, serving somewhere, even starting a new job. You know, we think, do you want a promotion or do you want to go for this job? Well, that's a bit beyond my means. Well, I think you can do it. And sometimes it's pressing through uh, just the fear um, of what we're thinking um, of what the job is or whatever the situation in our life is, to break through that ceiling of impossibility. Because with God, all things, I believe, are possible. Do you know, for us and for our Christian life, do you know, looking at you guys this morning, you're not bad people. <laughs> you're good people. Do you know, we're all, do you know, we're not bad people. We are trying to get through our Christian life um, as best we can, uh, dealing with life, dealing with circumstances. And yes, that is pastors as well. We're, we're just living our Christian lives, uh, trying to live as close as possible uh, to Jesus um, and seeing a breakthrough come uh, to our lives. Uh, the question that we have to ask and that the question I want to throw out to you is, will you allow yourself to be held back, confined, restricted in your life, or will you begin to believe that with God in your life, that things can change, that things can turn around, that you can see breakthrough? All things are possible. Come on, turn to someone and say, all things are possible in God, in God. In God. Um, and the thing that I want to speak about this morning is breakthrough faith requires, I believe, one of the things is a change in our thinking. Because we have to believe it. We have to believe it. When these four men, and we'll read the story in a minute, when these four men who carried, uh, it could be two women and two guys, four people carried their friend to encounter Jesus when they came across a crowded house. It's impossible. It's not going to happen today. I believe they had to change their thinking. They had to have a rethink about what they were going to do. Um, and that is where I believe our story this morning is, uh, does your thinking need to change? So let's read uh, Mark chapter 2. Uh, I'm just going to read... Uh, the story there that we saw acted out so well. Uh, if you have a Bible, uh, there I hear the sound of rustling. Mark chapter 2. 
Reading from verse 1. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. Say, because of the crowd. (laughs) So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. And then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. It's well seen, Jesus knows what we need. Yeah, chimney, your sins are forgiven. My child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. And it's true. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers and they were all amazed and praised God exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. Uh, Well, I thought I was acting there, Andrew. (laughs) Four friends hear that Jesus was in the house. Do you know, word about Jesus must have been spread um, across the place because these friends heard that Jesus was in this house, in this place. And so they decided, we need to take our friend to Jesus because we've heard the stories. We have heard the stories of his goodness, of his healings. Um, And you know, that is why it's so important that we need to tell our story um, as Christians because it brings hope to others. It brings faith. I believe it releases faith. Um, Oh, and just to say... Um, In this month of July, starting next Sunday, um, we're going to be talking about faith being released through our testimony. And so I am looking for testimonies um, of what God has done in your life. And there is a sheet at the back uh, of the church there. If you have a a story, um, fill in the sheet, bring it to us, give it to me. Um, And we're going to just, this will just help you summarize your story uh, there. And there is going to be a bit of preaching and speaking, but there's also going to be people in faith, hopefully, um, sharing their story of what God has done in their life. Um, the, the, the psalmist says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell the story. So you have a story this morning. Come on, tell someone you have a story. Turn to them, you have a story. You have a story. You have a story. You have a story. Um, And so stories of Jesus being spread around, and these four guys hear it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing what God has done. And so these four guys come, bring their friend, um, and the, the message says that people were jamming the entrance so no one could get in or out. There was a people jam. No way in, no way out. This was an impossible situation. We need our friend healed. We can't get in. We need a rethink. How are we going to do this? No room left. There was a roadblock. Do you know, and I want to throw it out for your life. Um, Are you facing what seems to be an impossible situation? What seems a situation where you can't see a way out, a way in? 
then there is one person you need to come to, and it's Jesus. It's Jesus. What roof? Because they rethought what they were going to do. Um, I thought they should have been more considerate to that man's house, whoever that man was, or woman, that they would take that roof off, dig a hole through it. Um, I hope they were invoiced for the repairs. But they looked and they saw a way to break through for their friend to receive his healing. And they lowered this man down. Um, and Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Do you know, he, he was there to walk. What's this about your sins forgiven? But I believe that is the greatest miracle of all as our sins are forgiven. I was lost and now I am found. I was dead and now I am alive. That is a miracle of salvation. That is a miracle of salvation. And this man, um, as he listened and heard, um, you know, we don't know what was going on in his mind. We don't know what was going on in his heart. Maybe he just needed to hear that. But then Jesus also says um, that as the people were saying, who on earth, you can't forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. Um, and you know, Jesus is saying, just as I can forgive sins, I can also heal and I'm going to show you. And as he said to that man, rise up and walk, take your mat and walk. Um, astonished. Um, and for us in our life, what ceiling do we need to break through in our life? Do you know, it could be a ceiling of addiction. It could be a ceiling of fear. It could be a ceiling of worry and anxiety. Um, there's just something that keeps us confined and restricted. Um, and I believe with faith we can break through with the help of Jesus. He's the one, as it talks about uh, in the, the prophets in the Old Testament, he is the break, he's the breaker. He's the one who breaks through for us and leads us through. He's the one. He is the one. Um, these uh, guys carrying their, their friends, maybe they have said, well, maybe it's God's will today. The house is crowded, maybe it's God's will. Maybe it's not meant for us to get in. Maybe we should come back tomorrow. Maybe Jesus wouldn't be there tomorrow. This, I believe, was a Kairos moment. This was a day of encounter, um, of encountering Jesus. And they took hold of it. And they pressed through. And, I, and we see that they got their encounter. Today, will you believe again. Maybe you have been knocked about by life and your faith and your belief in God and that your breakthrough can come is just again waning and wondering. Will you believe that God can do it? Will you believe that God can do it? Breakthrough faith does not allow the boundaries to prevent us from encountering Jesus. You know, maybe the thing that's crowding out your view of Jesus, maybe on the other side of what's crowding out, maybe on the other side of that roadblock uh, is where your breakthrough is. And you know, it would be easy for God to remove every obstacle. But I wonder if sometimes God wants to see how hungry are we for breakthrough? How hungry are we to see God just break into our lives to encounter God. Um, and so what is it that you need to break through uh, today? Disappointment, discouragement, words of unbelief that's spoken over you or in you, your own thoughts. What is the one thing that you can do to begin to see your breakthrough come? Maybe it's actually asking someone for help. We are the family of God. Maybe you need professional help. Maybe your breakthrough is just saying, I need help. I need help. Breaking through pride. Breaking through pride. And you know, I believe in 
as I close uh, this short message, I believe if we are going to see um, just more freedom come to our life, if we are going to see breakthrough come uh, to our life, uh, we have to change the way we think. Uh, Romans chapter 12, we all know it. Um, I shared uh, with the guys yesterday as we met uh, for some breakfast, I, I shared with them. These same uh, verses, and so dear brothers and sisters, uh, in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God, let God, Come on, say, let God. let God. I'm getting you to do this to stop you sleeping. <laughs> let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will know God's will for you, which is good, his pleasing, and perfect will. I just like looking at you. <laughs> you know, growing up as a Christian, or growing up even before I was a Christian, God had a plan for my life. God had a purpose for my life, and God still has a purpose for my life. And God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I believe if God had showed me the plan and the purpose of his plans over my life at a young age, I would have freaked. I would have ran the other way. Do you know, the, the, the plans and the purposes to be bringing God's word, to speaking God's word, to sharing God's word, to serving him, um, his plans and purposes were good. But I had a lot of mindsets to break in my mind. The fear, the fear of people, the fear of speaking, so many things um, in my life that I had to break through. What can God do with someone who grew up in a housing scheme in Casamilk, shared a room with his two brothers and his two sisters, um, and poverty, um, not a lot to eat. This young boy stuck in a home in Casamilk. Anyone know Casamilk? Me and you, Derek. <laughs> what can God do with someone like that? When we say yes to God, a whole new world opens up. Uh, and God will take you on an adventure, I believe, and open up a whole new world of living. Am I rich? Not financially. But I am rich in blessing. I am rich in the goodness of God. I am a blessed man. And I am here but I've had to make some decisions of pressing through those things that has brought fear. I have came across the crowded houses, the, the ceilings over my life, and I've had to break through with God's help. I've had words spoken over me, you will amount to nothing. Stephen, you're always going to be average. I've heard all the words. Stephen, you're never going to amount to anything. Just don't try. But no, when God gets you, yeah. you're like, I'm going for it. Yeah. I want all that God has for me. Romans chapter 12. And I would encourage you, get into this chapter 12. 11 chapters in Romans. Uh, they're telling and laying down a foundation of what God, what Jesus has done for us that in darkness and now we're, we're in light. Do you know what I mean? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. There's so much in the, the book of Romans. And as we get into chapter 12, Paul is about saying, and here's how to live out what God has done in your life. And that is the truth um, of our lives because God is calling us to live out 
all that he has done in our life because we have a world that needs to hear that Jesus can heal, that Jesus can save, that Jesus can turn your life around. Anyone had their life turned around here? Jesus is the one that can break addictions over your life because he has paid the price. Jesus is the one that can take away your guilt, that you don't have to walk through life feeling so guilty, that he has paid the price. And God has a plan for your life. And people have a plan for your life. And you may have a plan for your life. I would just say, what plan do you want to take? It's a change in our thinking. One uh, theologian says, the prospering of God's cause on earth depends on his people thinking well. You've got to think well. We tend to not think well. We tend to put ourselves down all the time. And God is saying, we are children of the living God. We have been given authority. We have the Holy Spirit in us. And you know, when we face impossible situations, that is when we can turn to God and say, God, I need you. I need to see a breakthrough come. Will you show me the way? Will you give me the wisdom? Will you give me the strength? Will you give me the the way out? Because if we can do it, we don't need God. And I have tried many times, and I have found a way out that's got me into more mess. Take the limits off our thinking. We need, if we are going to see freedom come more and more to our life, if we are going to take hold of God's promises and his purposes and his plans in our life, we have to change the way we think. Without faith, we can't please God. That's the truth. Faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we cannot see. Faith is about the unseen realm. I don't see the solution yet, but I have faith that God is going to bring it. That's our faith in God. Seeing things from his perspective. How do we see things from God's perspective? Yes, he reveals it through his Holy Spirit, but we also have the word of God. The word of God. The word of God. And pages, the word of God, we have everything that we need to help us steer our life through life. I've said enough. I'm going to ask the band to come back. Do you know our world will try and conform you into its way of thinking. I loved a quote that C.H. Spurgeon had says, we shall not adjust our Bibles to the age, but before we have done with it, by God's grace, we shall have adjusted the age to the Bible. That it's his word. Come on, let's stand. It's been uh, a mixture of things happening this morning. I want us just to take just a moment just to think about where are you today? Are you in need of a breakthrough? Are you in need just to see change come to your life? And let me say, it is a journey. It is a process. It is a step each day. Step at a time. It's not a sprint. But God, I believe, wants to, just to help you believe that breakthrough is possible. Yeah, come Holy Spirit. Come on, just be, be, 
be speaking to God. Tell him what, what's going on. Thank you, Jesus. What ceiling is it that you need to see broken over your life? What crowd, what is crowding out, you know? And again, sometimes the enemy brings roadblocks to our life, and, and we have to determine, am I going to press through it? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Breakthrough. So here is what I feel uh, for us to do. Uh, we are going to sing our, our final song. Uh, that's an opportunity of, of just giving our tithes and our offerings. Uh, there you have an envelope on your seat. There's QR codes, the box is at the back uh, for your giving. But we're going to sing our final song. And if you're in a place where you just need to see a breakthrough come, and whether that's financially, whether that's for healing, I, I just sense that we want to stand with you. We want you to know we're with you. Maybe today, your first step in seeing change come to your life is to give your life to Jesus. You've tried everything else. You've tried in your own strength. You've tried your own means. And I would like to say today, have you tried Jesus? And maybe today, this is a day when you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Give him your life and he will give you life. And so, we're going to sing. We're going to pray the blessing over us to close, officially close our meeting. If you get, oh no, the kids are here. I was going to say if you get kids in the kids club. <laughs> They're here, so you're all right. Tea and coffee will be served soon. But come forward, you need a breakthrough. And if you are sick in your body, come forward. We want to pray for you. As we sing this final song, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for all that we've heard. I thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross for us, that we can know freedom from sins, that we can know healing, that we can know breakthrough in our lives. Lord, just as these four friends saw an impossible situation, but they re had, had a rethink and found a way. They pressed through. And Lord, I am asking for your glory and your presence to come as we pray for people here. Would you speak directly into people's hearts today? I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to hand over Fonny just to lead us. Uh, and if you need prayer, come forward and we will pray for you. Bless you.